Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss something interesting involving transition elements. Now we know that transition metals can form complexes, but there are certain questions that we have seen in prelim papers asking us involving high spin complexes versus low spin complexes. Of course, this idea is not really in A-level chemistry syllabus, but actually what is the difference between a high spin complex and a low spin complex and what are the circumstances where a transition metal will be high spin or be low spin. So I think it is a good idea to go through what is the difference between a high spin complex and a low spin complex so that when we encounter some of these terms in exams, then we can understand the question better. Alright, let's start the discussion with something simpler first. Let us consider iron 3 plus in the gaseous state. So if I have iron 3 plus in the gaseous state, then it is essentially by itself, not interacting with any ligands. So it is actually not really a complex. So how do I consider the electronic configuration of iron 3 plus? Now iron element has 26 electrons. So therefore the electronic configuration should be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d6, 4s2, then when I'm forming ion 3 plus, I will need to remove three electrons from the valence shell. I will need to take away two electrons from the 4s subshell and one electron from the 3d subshell. So we will end up with something like this. The electronic configuration for ion 3 plus should be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d5. If we consider 3d5, that means if we focus on the electronic configuration for the 3d subshell, how would I write out the electron in box diagram involving this 3D5? I know that if I want to fill up five electrons in the 3D subshell, then the electrons should be separate. They shouldn't occupy the same orbital and they should have the same spin, correct? So the electron in box diagram should look something like this. The first electron will go to the first 3D orbital. Second electron, it should be in a separate orbital, but it should have the same spin as the first electron so that it will be the ground state. So the second electron should be spin up. The third, fourth and fifth electron, same thing. They should be in their own orbitals and they all have the same spin. So 3D5 should look something like this. And in this case, what you notice is the total number of unpaired electrons that we have will be five unpaired electrons. All right, so let me put this here. You notice the total number of unpaired electrons for ion 3 plus in the gaseous state, it will be five unpaired electrons. Now the number of unpaired electrons, it is related to the spin. So usually if you have more unpaired electron, then we say that the spin is higher. And if we have less unpaired electron, then we say that the spin is lower. So later when I compare high spin, low spin complexes, we will need to go and count the number of unpaired electrons inside the 3D subshell. Now next, let us consider iron 3 plus complex to water ligands. So the complex, it is something like this, iron surrounded by six water ligands. Overall charge, this is a plus three because iron, if it is a plus three oxidation state, water ligands, this is neutral, right? So overall, this charge will be a plus three. Now, of course, if I consider the electronic configuration involving iron 3 plus, the number of electrons should be the same. So therefore the electronic configuration effectively would still be the same as the previous case, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d5. But now what I know is because of the complex formation between iron metal center and water ligands, then there will be a DD orbital splitting. We know that some of the orbitals will interact more with the ligand to a bigger extent because of the symmetry or the shape of the complex. So the D orbitals that interact more with the ligands will be pushed up to a high energy level. So we call this the D star level and the D orbitals that interact less with the ligands will be lower in energy. So we call this the D energy level. And if I consider iron surrounded by six water ligands, the complex is octahedral. So the splitting pattern of an octahedral complex will be two orbitals on top and three orbitals at the bottom. So another thing which is interesting is water as a ligand, it is considered as a weak ligand. So therefore the interaction with the orbitals, it is to a smaller extent. And the consequence is 
the difference in energy gap between D and D star level, this energy gap will be smaller. So if the energy gap is small, then if I want to fill in five electrons, because the electronic configuration for the 3D subshell, it is still 3D5, right? So what I want to do is I want to put in the five electrons. So how would the electronic configuration be like? So as per normal, according to the off power rule, the electrons should go to the lowest energy state first so that it will be considered most stable state or the ground state. So therefore, the first electron actually should come here. Then where should the second electron be? So the second electron should go to the second d orbital, right? Because these three orbitals, they are degenerate. They have the same energy level. So it is equivalent to filling up the electronic configuration within a subshell. So what I will do is the first electron will be to the first orbital. The second electron will be to the second orbital. Again, it has to be separate and they must have the same spin. The third electron it will be to the third orbital. And same thing, they all should have the same spin. Now how about electron number four? Now electron number four, since there is a small energy gap, what we will do is the electron will go to the D star level. So electron number four will come here, same spin. Electron number five will go to the next D orbital, which will be here, and it will have the same spin as the rest of them. So in the case of a weak ligand such as water, the energy gap between D to D star is small. So when we write out the electronic configuration, you notice this 3D5, we also will have five unpaired electrons. So effectively, it is the same as the previous case that we have, ion 3 plus in the gaseous state. So if you recall what we have done previously, involving ion 3 plus in the gaseous state, the electronic configuration or the electron in box diagram for 3D5 will be something like this, five unpaired electrons. So coming back to here, if I consider water, which is a weak ligand, because of the small energy gap between D to D star, so what the electrons will do is, the electrons will effectively just ignore this energy gap and it will just fill up as per normal. So it will end up with the same electronic configuration, you will have five unpaired electrons. Now what if ion 3 plus it is coordinated to a strong ligand in state? Because in the previous case, when ion is coordinated to water, we say that water, the ligand is a weak ligand. So the outcome is the energy gap is small and when we write out the electronic configuration, effectively there's no difference, right? Exactly the same as ion 3 plus in the gaseous state. But if I have a strong ligand, then something interesting comes in. So let us consider this complex here. This is ion coordinated to six Cn minuses. So I will have ion six Cn minuses and the oxidation state of ion will remain as a plus three. But because each Cn it is a minus one charge, so six of them will be a minus six overall charge of this complex will be a minus three. Again, there's no difference in the electronic configuration for ion three plus, it will still be one S2, two S2, two P6, three S2, three P6, three D5. So same idea, we want to figure out the arrangement of these electrons in the 3D subshell. Again, because this is a complex, so I know that there's a DD orbital splitting and the splitting pattern for an octahedral complex will be two orbitals on top, three orbitals at the bottom. Because CM minus, it is a strong ligand, so therefore it is able to interact with the d orbitals to a bigger extent. So the consequence is you have a much bigger energy gap between d to d star. So the stronger the ligand, the bigger the energy gap between d to d star level. Now let's try to fill up five electrons in this 3d5 configuration. Now the first three electrons should be straightforward because they should be here at the lower energy level. So the first three electrons should be a spin up. Now what is interesting is the position of electron number four because will electron number four come to the D star level? Now, because the energy gap between D to D star, it is too big. So therefore it requires too much energy for the electron to come here. So what this means is the electron will rather pair up at the D level instead of going to the D star level. So electron number four, in this case, actually will prefer to come here and it prefers to stay at the D level because it requires too much energy for it to be promoted to the D star level. And of course, if I have two electrons in the same orbital, they must have opposite spins. So the second guy will be a spin down. Similarly, electron number five, energy required to come here at the D star level it is too big. So you rather stay down here at the bottom 
and it will be a spin down. So interestingly, what we notice is this will be the electronic configuration for your 3D5 subshell when we have a strong ligand. And you notice the number of unpaired electrons will be very different, right? If I go and count the number of unpaired electrons, this is an electron pair, this is an electron pair, only one unpaired electron in this case. When the ligand complex to the metal, it is a strong ligand. All right, let us try to sum this up and try to link this to high spin complex versus low spin complex. The two complexes that we have are here, iron surrounded by six water, three plus charge, iron surrounded by six cyanide, three minus charge. As mentioned previously, we said that water, it is a weak ligand. So therefore the energy gap is small. So in terms of filling up the electrons, the electrons just basically ignore the small energy gap and they just fill up as per normal. So I'll end up with five unpaired electrons. So I have one, two, three, four, five unpaired electrons. And the consequence is since I have five unpaired electrons, I have more unpaired electrons. So this is considered as a high spin complex. So the more unpaired electrons we have, we say that the spin is higher. So iron, in this case, if it is attached to a weak ligand, there's a tendency for the complex to be a high spin complex. Now conversely, if I consider iron surrounded by 6 cyanide, because Cn minus it is a strong ligand, so therefore we have a large energy gap between D to D star. And when we fill up the electrons, you notice the electrons prefer to stay here at the bottom, at the D level, because it requires too much energy for it to go to the D star level. So based on 3D5 at the bottom, and I go and consider the number of unpaired electron, I only have one unpaired electron. So since this complex has only one unpaired electron, we say that yes, less unpaired electrons compared to the previous case, right? So this is considered as a low spin complex. So a metal center, which is coordinated to a strong ligand, will have the tendency to form low spin complexes. All right, so there was a discussion involving high spin complexes and low spin complexes. So after this discussion, hopefully we have a better understanding involving the differences between the two. So in general, we are not required to know if you are given this particular complex, how do I know whether this guy it is a high spin or this is a low spin? Because again, high spin, low spin complexes is not in A-level camp syllabus. So if they were to ask us in questions, they will have to provide sufficient information for us to answer the question. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up. Like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.